What is up, my good people? Optic Blake here from Team Summertime. And if you've been like us for the last two days, you've been absolutely grinding your life away playing Call of Duty Vanguard. And I hope you've had as good as a time as we had. We've been getting a lot of questions about our graphic settings, our controller settings, and just general gameplay stuff. I hope these help you out. And so we're going to go through as quickly as I can through all the settings. And hopefully these will have you on your way to the game feeling good and looking good. Enjoy. But let's start with display, all right? We're going to go through these pretty quick. V-Sync off, V-Sync off, none of that. Set your frame rate to custom. Go down here and make sure this is pretty much all the way up. And then this is the big two right here, the menu and the minimize game. Just put those down to 60. It lets your graphics card kind of chill out a little bit while your game isn't uh, the main focus. Uh, brightness, set that to wherever is comfortable for you. I just left it at 50. Feels pretty good. Maybe crank it up a little bit if you're having a tough spot with dark corners. Display gamma, leave it on sRGB if you're on a monitor. HDR automatic has worked the best for me. Focus mode off. Display adapter, of course, makes make sure that's your graphics card. Mine is a 2080 Super. Um, and then on-demand texture streaming. So a lot of people have been getting packet loss, myself included. Uh, this apparently helps with packet loss, but I'm still getting it. But just make sure you go into this bottom one, on-demand texture streaming, and turn this off. It'll give you a little warning that says, like, warning this will reduce gameplay quality or something. But just uh, tick that off and you'll be good. Next, go over to quality. Make sure this is on custom. You can choose between all of these, but we're going to change uh, pretty much a lot of things in here. So make sure that's on custom. Dynamic resolution is off. And so this is where we start getting into the nitty gritty. Uh, texture res, medium. Texture filter, anisotropic. The particle level, the particle resolution, and the bullet impacts. You pretty much want those as detailed as possible in my experience. Um, the detail of surfaces at an angle thing. This has pretty low effect on VRAM anyway but it does help visibility in this game, in my opinion. These are the two biggest ones right here for me. Uh, the particle quality and the resolution. On maps like Tuscan with that big fiery tree and on Red Star with the snow, there's a lot of particles in the air in this game. And when you have these low, it just makes it harder to see through them in my experience over the past two days. So put these up to high. It doesn't mess with your VRM too much and it helps a lot. Uh, bullet impacts and sprays. Uh, you know, we're always graffiti graffiti and something so i i need to keep these on and you can draw smiley faces into the wall that's fun shader quality i have that on low tessellation uh this is kind of like the detail of the gravel and stuff like that um i i have it on there's a lot of areas in the map where it's, it's kind of hard to differentiate between the ground and like a sandbag or something this seems to help me a little bit uh level of detail long nearby and distant and clutter are all on high these are basically little small things like grass and little uh, pieces of paper on the ground and stuff that are stagnant objects. And you don't want those all popping up as you run because you're going to think they're people. Uh, screen space shadows off. Shadow map res low. Sun, make sure that's low. Cache, both of these caches are on. I only know that from playing Warzone. And a lot of these are Warzone settings, but I've also tweaked a couple of them. Side note, uh, you'll see an option. Uh, I'll find it in here. I don't use it, but... It says like, do you want to import all your settings from Warzone? If you want to just get a solid base start to start with and you like your Warzone settings, go ahead and port them over and then go from there. But I definitely try and juice all the frames I can in Warzone. And sometimes I'd rather see better on this game. I don't need 230 frames running around most of the time. Uh, back into the cache, make sure both of the caches are on. Spot cache size on low. Spot shadow quality is high. Particle lighting is high. These also with those things I was talking about with the lighting of the snowflakes and the embers and stuff like that. Just put those on a high. It's easier to see. Ambient occlusion. I messed with this a decent amount last night. Um, I still didn't notice that much of a difference. Uh, kind of makes the shadows and corners darker, which it wasn't necessarily a good thing. So ambient occlusion, I opted to leave that on off. And screen space reflection. This is like your puddles and your car windows and stuff like that. It's just extra taxing on your VRAM. So no, you don't really need it. Screen space off. Uh, this is the one thing that I didn't, I, I was new to this. I've never heard of Fidelity FX, at least in a COD setting before. Um, so I, I tried a bunch of these out. Ultra quality seemed the best. It gave me about 10 to 15 extra frames, and I really didn't see any issue uh, with the graphics quality at all. This is probably the biggest thing for me, and this is like, I have such an ask of the devs to fix this. This anti-aliasing, I was in a tournament last night, and I kept trying to snipe people at range and i was like dude i just can't see him i literally can't see him filmic versus smaa t2x these are anti-aliasing so basically it um, makes things softer or more granular especially at range 
Um, so in Warzone, this is a big deal too. A lot of people just play anti-alias off in Warzone, but Filmic makes everything soft at a distance and I, I cannot stand it. Yes, it might look better to like a casual person, but when you're playing in comp and I need to see that dude, it's gonna screw you over every time. And it resets, that is the main issue with this. So pretty much every time you play, at least for now until they make this change, uh, make sure your anti-alias is on T2X and then press show more and put this all the way down to low. Depending on your graphics card, I have a 2080, you'll see a lot more of those jagged edges, um, but it will make the whole game way more crisp and highly recommend every time you get on, at least for the foreseeable future, SMA T2, T2X and low. It helps a lot. Uh, depth of field off, and then I have my VRAM target usage all the way up at 90%. And on gameplay, so FOV is kind of a, you know, user dependent thing. We all play around 105. I think Hitch just plays on 107 just to be unique because, you know, that's him as a person. Uh, but we're on 105. That feels pretty good to me. And make sure you go to show more. And a lot of times you're going to want to play unaffected. If it feels absolutely foreign to you, you've played on independent forever. Try out both and see which one works best. Uh, the only reason I would ever play independent in this game is for one tap Magnum headshots. But generally speaking, uh, if you play on affected, when you play on a much higher FOV, for instance, 105, when you zoom in and you ADS down sight, it's going to snap back to around default FOV, which is around 80. So it's going to be much more zoomed in and there's going to be much more noticeable visual recoil. But if you play on affected, it basically just puts the gun in front of your screen and doesn't change your FOV. Um, so try both of those out, but most people nowadays play on affected. For camera movement, put this on least, world motion, weapon motion both on off and then for reflex low latency put this on on and that is done for that tab that's pretty much the meat of this one but we'll go through these as well i've been playing on the audio mix as headphones generally speaking dead silence in this game is pretty strong the characters grunt a lot so to make sure uh you hear the grunting for now just pop it on headphones it's been working for me uh this mute everyone except party because for some reason uh they forgot the mute all button in multiplayer so that's been fun so make sure that you just go ahead and toggle this on Mute everyone except for party, especially if you're live. And then for the controller. So again, same thing with FOV. These are going to be a lot of preference, but I play on a really high sense uh, just because we're always going for crazy world star clips and high sense usually leans towards that play style. Most pros are going to play around 5.5 five or 6.6, or six, six, something like that. Um, so kind of test out your sensitivity and see what works best for you based on play style. But I basically play a high sense. And then I'll show you, this is where the big change comes in and why it still works for competitive. So on custom sensitivity presume, this is by default going to be off. Go ahead and toggle this on and you're gonna click show more. It's overwhelming at first, but this whole game is kind of overwhelming at first. There's so many settings, but once you get them dialed in, it's a really good experience. So for low zoom, this is basically your iron sights and your general red dots. I play on 0.8. So it's like when I'm ADS with a red gun, my sensitivity somewhere around the eight and a half mark rather than being 11 11 all the time and then pretty much from 5x to high zoom these are all the different uh sniper scopes that you're going to put on your guns so i play on 1.2 just because i like a pretty snappy uh snipe so this is where it's obviously going to come down to preference but generally speaking if you play on a low sense but you want a little snappier snipers go ahead into the custom sensitivity and play on that usual pro level 6.6 six, and crank these up to maybe 1.3, 1.4 from five all the way to high zoom and they'll make your snipe still feel nice and crisp. Uh, we play on default. We use scuff controllers. I don't play claw. We just use scuffs. So the slide cancel in this game is the same as MW, the same as Warzone. It's gonna be slide, slide, jump. So for me, that is BBA or uh, circle, circle, X. I'm an Xbox kid still at heart, which is weird. Uh, aim response curve type. This feels the exact same as MW to me. Pretty much everybody played on dynamic. Uh, dynamic feels very good. It's very snappy. Um, definitely try that out, but standard's also good too, but we all play on dynamic. Make sure this is on instant. I don't know if this is default instant or not, but this is ADS sensitivity. And so as soon as you press that left trigger button, you want that to, to swap in. Uh, these are the dead zones. So your left, usually the dead zones in previous games is just your left stick, right stick. So basically, if you have stick drift or something like that, you're going to have to put these up because it limits. It basically it is almost like an open gate in a microphone. So it dictates how much you have to move the stick to register an input. But generally speaking, to make your controller as responsive as possible, you want these as low as possible. So 
uh, five, five on both a six, and they also have the trigger dead zone. So this is how lightly or how hard you have to press the triggers to make them activate. So uh, I have those all the way down as, as well. So pretty much five on all these. And then for both the sticks, this set both of those to 99. Lastly on gameplay, this is the basically the movement mechanics. There's a lot of specifics in here as well. If you haven't been paying attention to the rest of the video because they were all PC settings and you're on console, this is the part you're gonna wanna pay attention to. These are all by default on, these are all good. Depleted ammo switch, I leave these all on. So this is the one for me, I jump shot all the time. And when you're in competitive play or just playing SD in general, a lot of times you're behind cover. And if you jump, you're automatically going to mantle and it's gonna get you killed. So I pretty much shut all of these down as much as possible. So for me to mantle, I have to jump and then press it again. So I have to double jump essentially to mantle something. By default, I believe this is on. So I definitely turn this one off. And then depending on your preference and how you move and what your play style is, you can kind of mess with these. I don't like ground mantle or automatic mantle at all. So I have all of these shut all the way down. If you don't like how this feels and you want to change this, I would put it to partial. Uh, and then ATS, uh, we all play on automatic tactical sprint. Uh, it saves your hands. If you want to play crack, this is definitely helpful. But if you find yourself getting killed and sprinting where you really shouldn't be, just try automatic sprint for the start and then maybe work towards ATS. But it'll save your hands and most people play on ATS unless it's like restricted in the CDL. This is another big one, slide behavior, put this on tap. Uh, this makes you, this is gonna help your slide cancels tenfold because you don't wanna have to hold that B button or that right stick every time. Leave these all the same and then interact and reload behavior. There's a couple little weird things in this game when you're trying to plant the bomb and stuff, it'll like close a door, like mess with a barrier because there's 8,000 of those right now. Um, but I play on prioritized reload. The reason I do this is because we're in pubs there's guns all over the floor. And if you have it on prioritize interact, then when you're in a gunfight, you're going to lay down one shot and you're going to try and reload your gun by just tapping square. And it's going to pick up a swap weapon on the gap on the ground. So basically what this does, the interact and reload behavior is based on what's around you. It dictates which one it's going to do first. That is pretty much my settings for Vanguard. Hopefully I'll be in touch soon with some more gunsmith stuff because it is a whole other can of worms in the gunsmith. But I'm telling you, we're going to have a fantastic year and some absolutely funky weapon builds. Happy gaming out there, folks. Enjoy Vanguard. We will be live pretty much every night at twitch.tv slash hitch a ride, two eyes and ride. I love you. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.